What up? Happy comic book day. It is Comic Head 84. I'm going to run you through my new comic book purchases for the week of November 28th and show you what's hot, what's not, what's going on in these books. So strap in and let's do this. First up, I'm going to start with Late Arrivals from last week. So these are books that came out last week, but for whatever reason through mail, usually because of books that I have on mail order arrive a few days late or over the weekend. So boom, Marvel Knights number two, the J. Lee variant. This thing is so fire that I can't believe I haven't heard more about this cover. Man, I think this is one of the dopest covers that I've seen in a long time. If they, I wish they had a Virgin variant out there because I would have paid good money for a Virgin variant cover of this book, but I don't think it exists, but that's fine. This, this cover is still on fire because they even incorporated the logo well. The, the Marvel Knights logo up top, the color scheme matches Electra's suit, the gargoyles on the side, the composition of this thing. Jay Lee is a master. This might be legit my favorite Jay Lee cover ever. I might get this thing graded. Value be damned, man. Just because this work of art, I want to preserve it, slab it. Holy shit. So, yeah. Can you tell I love this cover? I do. But I'm not going to sit here and slob over the damn thing. You've seen it. You know the deal. That's like a 20, that's a 1 in 25 variant. So, you know, expect to pay 20, 25 bucks, I believe. I pre-ordered it on Midtown, so I think I paid... Uh, 21 uh, what if Thor was raised by frost giants I this book is uh, came out uh, a few months ago or something like that I didn't grab it I kind of wanted to uh, kind of wanted to read this issue but I didn't but I ended up grabbing it because they were offering the signed copies from Midtown at a good price so I said why not and I was especially pumped for this one. What if magic became so, so supreme? Another what if book that I did not grab when it first came out. And man, that's a beautiful cover image. I like when they sign with either silver or gold marker or pen or whatever. This was signed by Leah Williams. I believe these are both the writers of this book, which, you know, that's probably why they get let go so cheap, because uh, it's not quite the same as when you get it signed by the artist. But hey, I didn't have the books in the collection, so I figured I might as well add them, but signed. All right, that was it for last week, guys. Let's start up this week, November 28th. Start with the in indie books. Well, Image, I don't know if you still call them indie, but you know what I mean. Image, The Warning, number one. Pretty dope book. You'll notice there's just one name down here, LaRoche. This book is a one-man band operation. Edward LaRoche. Writing, penciling, inking, lettering, the whole shebang. That's what made me interested in picking this thing up. Because normally when you have a creator who is in control of everything. I'm assuming this guy has total creative control of this book and is doing whatever he wants. I can't imagine he's uh, doing all the duties on the book, but somehow Image is directing him on anything. So safe to assume this is Ed LaRoche's passion project. So whenever you have a creator in that position, you're usually getting the best out of them. So I'd be curious to see where this goes. One thing to show is like, it's very dramatic and not in a bad way. The dr there's a dramatic pacing and layout to this book. The art is, is dope. You know, some sci-fi goodness ahead. I'm going to... Reading this issue number one has definitely warranted a pickup of number two. Next up. Ahoy Comics. Edgar Allan Poe, Snifter of Terror. This is undoubtedly my cover of the week. This thing is just tremendous. Um... <laughs> that image is so fucking uh, bizarre, absurd, awesome. You know, you got your boy Poe holding a glass of wine. Homage to the, is it 50-foot woman or 500-foot woman? 
I forget. I think it's 50 foot woman. But, you know, the old, what is that, a B movie? The old B movie, 50s era, I think. Movie poster of 500 foot woman, 50 foot woman, rather. So, one thing that I like that Ahoy does with its comics, and I'm going to show you real quick, is on the back cover to give you like a virgin variant cover on the back which i appreciate especially when with a cover like this i like that they give you that on the back of the issue so that's really cool that cover is amazing if you haven't uh i picked up the last one and if you haven't picked up this series at all or are unfamiliar with it you basically are getting you know he's holding that wine cup because it's kind of like drunk history is one way to kind of describe it. You have Edgar Allan Poe. He usually starts the issue drinking in a pub. Yep, there he is. Drinking in a pub, and he tells you a couple of kind of horror stories. So you get two stories per issue. They're generally linked in theme, and that's how this book rolls. So if you can still find these, I'm pretty sure this is, you know, a low print run book. I... Uh, Ordered it ahead of time with my local shop and told them to put it aside because I wasn't sure what the availability was going to be. There still was one left on the rack when I went there. So I don't know what the availability of this book is in your area, but scoop this thing up, man. That's a hot cover. I would imagine that thing would be coming in high demand, perhaps. If they got similar tastes as I do. I might just like bizarre shit. I don't know. So let's move on to the big two. Old Lady Harley, number two. Uh, this is an interesting book the, for you key chasers out there. If you're not aware, you know, this book is introducing a lot of the Batman rogues gallery in this old man, old lady version universe. You get the guys on the cover, old lady Catwoman, old man Clayface, old man Killer Croc hiding back there, old man Riddler and Mr. Freeze. Spoiler let me, if, you, if you haven't read issue number one or number two and don't want to know anything, spoiler, skip ahead. Skip ahead to this time here and don't worry about it. Now, what I wanted to give you guys a heads up on is, first, you may have heard, or if you read issue number one, the, the word was that Batman Beyond appeared on the last panel of issue number one. So in issue number two, you're going to find out that that is not Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis is not in this book. He's not in this universe. It doesn't seem. So scratch that. If you were going to pick this book up for that reason, don't worry about it. Now, what is interesting, he's just like a robot Batman that looks like Batman Beyond. It was a, it was a kind of a pump move. It's kind of a clickbait move, I got to be honest. But they actually come through with something even better. I wasn't expecting this. They throw you... Old man Bruce Wayne, old man Batman in this issue. So that is kind of interesting. You know, if if DC is going to lean into this old lady universe the same way Marvel has, you know, Marvel really took the ball and ran with the old man Logan, Hawkeye, and Quill. That's like an established universe now. So DC likes to do Elseworld titles. If that's going to continue in this vein, then you got a lot of first appearances in this issue. All these rogues gallery right here on the cover. In addition to that, you also get Old Man Zaz, Old Man Mad Hatter, Kite Man, and what's his name? Crazy Quilt. So you get all those guys in this issue and Bruce Wayne Batman, which that was the most interesting thing to me. Are they going to do anything with Old Man Batman uh, in DC moving forward if this book becomes successful? So, boom, that's the deal with this book. It was actually a pretty good read. It was interesting, I enjoyed it, and I would recommend it. Speaking of Batman, Heroes in Crisis. Actually, Batman doesn't appear in this issue at all. Um, Heroes in Crisis number three. I'm still digging the, the comic. I'm still going to follow it. This book wasn't as solid as the last two. It doesn't really progress the plot forward very much it's kind of they kind of backtracking and showing you early days of the sanctuary and focusing in on a couple characters it was still interesting the one part that was kind of disappointing was the one thing i look forward to in this book 
is all that interior artwork by Clay Mann, who's just like the best in the biz right now for me. And he only he only does page one and page 20, the last book, the last page of the comic. So it is the first and last page, and it pages between 2 and 19 are all Lee Weeks, which is, he's a good artist, no doubt, but Clay Mann's on a different level. And it was kind of disappointing to see that, you know, I feel like they only had him do page one and two just so they can still say that he's drawing on the book, you know? What the fuck? So that was a little bit of a bummer. Let's jump to Marvel. Uncanny X-Men. Number three. If you recall, last week, I kind of shit on this series. And particularly the art. That is not the case this week. Uh, The art was legit in this book this week which is kind of weird or concerning about this series right now. They're in such a rush to put this out every week. You know, the art's going to be inconsistent. Uh, and I, I think the writing, too. I, there's three different writer credits on the book, so I'm not sure how that goes. But I enjoyed it. Look at this art, matter of fact. The artist on this issue was Yildire Sinar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yildire Sinar. And look at his drawing of Jubilee in an action page. This... This is a zoom in on a pretty small image of Jubilee on a page. She's not the main focal point. This is Jubilee in the background doing battle. I mean, look at that. Look at that compared to what I was pointing out last week. And like, that's what I'm talking about. You, th- There is a quality difference there. And that sh- kind of shit matters to me when I'm paying, you know, four bucks for the book. So that's all I was saying. I'm glad they, this artist turned it around and... I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm going to stick with this thing no matter what because I'm just waiting for Cyclops to come back, yo. I'm going to stick around for Cyclops for sure. Old Man, Hawkeye, number 11. This book is fire. This series is one of my favorite series on the rack right now. The story is awesome. Uh, I don't even want to spoil anything, but there is just dope. You know, according, you can see from the cover, Baron Zemo is in this issue, you get a Baron Zemo Hawkeye showdown, finally. And it's tremendous, and it's not what you expect, and it's uh, really well done. As far as you key, being key-minded with this book, you know, the, the word on the street ahead of time was that there was a first appearance of Captain Hydra in this issue. And that technically is the case, but if you know this was on anyone's hit list for just that reason, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Technically, that dude does appear, but uh, spoiler alert to like 20 seconds from now, Captain Hydra does show up, but he's dead like two pages later. He seems inconsequential, and I don't think we'll be seeing him again. So if you eye in this book for that reason, don't sweat it. Lastly, Daredevil, number 612. Holy shit, this book knocked my dick in the dirt. (laughs) Wait, I don't know what that means. (laughs) Um, This book uh, impressed me, why don't I say that? Uh, It makes me want to go back and pick up this run, man, because I love Daredevil, but I haven't been picking up this recent run because I I don't like jumping in halfway and... I don't know, I just avoided it, but I knew that creative teams were changing the next issue. So I said, let me grab this one so I can try and ease into 613 and try out that story arc. And god damn, this thing was like a masterclass. The Charles Soule is a really talented writer. He is killing it. The last like four or five pages of this comic are on another level masterpiece type shit really really good the artwork is out of control too um phil soto is a really unique artist i just want to throw up this page this page like stopped me in my tracks for a couple minutes just dope kingpin artwork Uh, it's like it's really legitimately is like nothing that i'm seeing on the racks anywhere else i'm assuming it's all painted i don't know if this is digital work or not i don't know man but it has a really cool look to it this was a really cool issue 
I would recommend it. I definitely grabbed the dopest cover of the week of this one. There was like three options, and this one is the Hot Fire one. This is a cover price variant. I'd recommend you grab this one as well. And I'm gonna probably go, you know, look at the trades, look online or something to follow this run from the beginning, from when Charles Soul and preferably when this duo started. If you know what issue that those these guys started on this book, Soul and so Noto, Phil Noto, drop it in the comments. All right, y'all, that's it for the week. I don't want to keep you any longer. Thank you for spending the time that you have. And I will see you next time. Peace.